Hey folks, my name is Provis and welcome to more Farthest Frontier in our large settlement of Enyalitan now at Tier 4, which means we have access to all the fun stuff. And that means we have a lot that we want to do as far as getting some upgrades. I want to finish out some walls. I want to get some better extraction methods like the Deep Stone Mine and so on and so forth. Plenty for us to be doing right about now. Though I haven't decided if this is going to end up being the last video of this series. It might, and I guess for you guys, you've already seen a thumbnail, so you know one way or another if that's true. But once we kind of get to this point here, we've unlocked just about everything. Once I get myself into a position where I feel like I'm very sustainable, there's not a whole lot that I want to do, right? Like, why just keep building bigger and better but rinsing repeating? That's not the best content for you guys. Yes, by the way, I know that the poop is building up. I'm sorry I'm working on it. We're getting ourselves another one of these compost yards exactly for that purpose. Just don't at me, bro. Anyway, so yeah, I don't really know if there's a lot of point in that. That said, there are at least a couple things that I want to do. Mainly, I want to focus on getting a military properly up and running because that was one of the big features of the latest update, right? And thus far, it's not like we've been very happy with with how things are currently going over here. However, I do think it would be nice to get myself some heavy infantry and pikemen, maybe even some cavalry if I can swing it. And since we know that there are some banditos on the map elsewhere, there are some bandit camps in a few directions. Uh, I think there's like one up over here. There we go, yeah. We can go around and start actually clearing out the map. We can also get rid of all the wolf dens and so on. Turn this into a nice, happy little utopia and remove the threat of the bandit raids. Well, not completely. But the point is, make them almost impossible to get into the town. Make everyone safe, everyone wealthy, everyone prosperous, food no longer an issue, everyone happy. And I'll say, that's good enough, and we can end things. Do I accomplish that in this video? I've got no idea. I'm gonna find out. Right now, the most important thing that I feel like I can probably work on is going to be the quarry site over here. For that, we do need some more heavy tools, which I am manufacturing. This is gonna be my infinite source of stone. Good lord, could I use an infinite source of stone? So yeah, I'm hoping that this is gonna be a big solution to a lot of my problems. It lets me actually get a lot of upgrades we've had to pass on so far, and it lets me finish out the walls so that we're nice and defensible. And as we saw in the last video, if, they, if Raiders don't bring a battering ram, these walls do a surprisingly good job of holding off, right? We also want to get ourselves the infinite clay source. Here it is, over this direction, which for some reason is getting a higher priority. That doesn't make much sense. But this also would solve some problems in that I can go ahead and keep manufacturing bricks and never have to worry about running out of clay. So between both of those, I think we'll be in really good shape. Now, to be fair, I could just buy everything I need, right? And we're kind of at the stage of the game where I'm starting to produce enough luxury materials. I think we could do that. I don't necessarily have to uh, produce my own stone, produce my own clay. That's just convenient because you never know what the traders are going to bring. But when I see just bare building blocks, right? Like, uh, yeah, like this stone right here, for example. I probably just go ahead and buy it. I'm making plenty of wealth. Let's just save me a lot of time and effort. And then we just offload some of our luxuries, get that money right back, and things are looking pretty good. Oh, deep quarry is up and running. Oh my, can we have a lot of people working over here? Okay, do I have a lot to spare? I sure as heck do. All right, let's just go ahead and get a lot of people producing stone. We have some temporary shelters nearby where people can bring by some firewood and food so that they don't have to travel all the way back home to meet some of their basic needs. And as long as we have the carters up and a running at these wagon shops, that'll take care of a lot of my transportation time. Beautiful. Do you want to go ahead and upgrade our temple, by the way? I think the answer is yeah. It's going to increase my monthly cost, which does suck, admittedly. But we've got enough money in stone. Might as well go ahead and do this. Get myself an extra relic slot, and then we can decide what we want to do with it. I don't know. Extra meat is okay. Upkeep costs I'm not worried about right now. Better guards. I mean, like, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if this is really a high priority right now. So, we can afford to do it. Let's just do it. Something I know I do want to build, since we haven't messed with this before. Guild Hall. Yeah, this seems good. Very expensive, but manage industries and services to make everything more efficient? Sure, I have to try this. Also, what about a library? Wow, this boosts desirability by quite a lot. Okay, this is a good, like, uh, anywhere from 7 to 10% more desirability just replacing down a freaking library. People like their books. Okay, 
And as another small milestone, that should be the last section of wall. Okay, so the entire settlement of Inyolitan is now fully covered by walls. We still need to get a few more sporadic towers here and there. Just for a little bit of extra defense, in case I find out that I've got a blind spot, I can still do some damage while they sit around trying to break through my walls. But this increases my survival chances substantially, I hope. Ooh, the temple's upgraded. Wow! That's kind of a cool-looking temple, ain't it? Oh, I like the little spires and a nice little circle. It's like a gigantic holy crown. Beautiful. All right, well, we can go ahead and assign ourselves an extra priesty person. If he's intoxicated, well, that's going to go over well. And then what do I really want here? Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't really feel like I need the meat production. I guess I'll just go ahead and take the shards of Narsal. That's fine. Really wish I could have another temple, though. It'd be fun to stack a whole bunch of relics. That would have been cool. Anyway, still waiting on the guild hall to get built up. I need to produce more iron and bricks. That's going to take a while. We produce some coal and such. So what about that their library thing? Cleared out one of the houses over in this general area. Uh, right here. We can fit it very close to the center of town. Okay, let's do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's kind of expensive. 150 bricks will still take a very long time. But it'll be nice when it's done. Oh, and raiders are approaching. Okay. Are they all... Nope, they're coming from up here and then all the way over here. Okay, these are actually two totally reasonable spots I can work with. And as long as they don't bring a battering ram, we'll be fine. So far, we know of about 88 raiders. Okay, considering we had more raiders before, that scares me that there are less people, but they are of a higher lethality. Also, where are you guys going? Please make sure you're coming over here. Yeah, they're going to the road. Good, good, good. All right, everyone else here, pull back. Of course, we need to ring the town bell, as we are accustomed. And what's happening over here? Ah, all of you guys, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. I would like to know why we're not shooting anyone. Hello? Garrisoning. Oh, the people aren't even here yet. Get in the tower and shoot them, dang it! Oh, gosh, and now they're gonna run over to this corner where I can't do anything about it. Ugh. And of course, these guys are running over here where they can't get shot, too. It's almost as if they know they're actually smart enough to look for the first point that is not covered by a tower. Literally, right on this edge. That's smart, but God, that's annoying. Okay, I'm going to try deleting this little piece of wall to see if that triggers them to go running into a place they shouldn't. Like one right over here, for example. Destroy this. And yes, it does. That's right, run into my death trap, ye fools. Okay, now they're in the village. But who cares? Look at all the look at all these guys ready to kill. Okay, these towers are actually going down. Okay, this might have been a slight error. Slight error. Slight error of judgment. I didn't... Th okay, they're actually stronger than I thought. Uh-oh. I mean, in the end, really, who trapped whom, right? It doesn't matter. I mean, okay, so I lost a couple of towers. Like we. But they're all gonna die, and I don't have to sit around for the next ten minutes waiting for them to break down a freaking piece of wall. At the end of the day, I guess I still call this a win. Uh, I just have learned a little bit more about the AI and why it's important to cover every square inch in tower coverage. So all in all, yeah, six buildings destroyed, just the towers, two people killed, 74 raiders killed, and they got absolutely nothing. Yep, totally fine. Oh, turn off the emergency alarm. Yeah, everything's fine. Totally fine. Hey, the guild hall is done. Okay, so what is this thing going to do? Filing paperwork. Okay, so it eeps my paper up. What does this do, though? We have armaments. All right, provide support for the production of armor. We have artisans, luxury goods. Clothiers for clothes. We have culinarians for food. We have metallurgy for ingots and tools. Miners for mines and pits and quarries. Then finally, woodworkers. Handle all levels of wood production and consumption, improving the harvesting of logs and the production of firewood furniture and wooden planks. So can I only ever have one thing at a time? Yes, I can only have one kind of guild here. I don't know... Oh. Okay, I was going to say, I don't know what the advantage is of having more people work here, but there is a bonus. I see. Well, let's swap over to an artisan's guild, and then if I assign more people here, apparently we give this, what, an 18% production increase? Up to a maximum of... Looks like about 27%. In, no, 30%. Huh. Consume a lot of paper... But hey, if we are able to boost up all of our luxury production by 30%, that seems good. Does that mean we're getting better efficiency in terms of like what resources are created from base resources, or is this just production speed? Because those are very different things and have very different impacts on my economy. I wish it was a little bit more clear on that. It's a shame that I can't build more than one guild house. Again, I'm not allowed to stack all sorts of wonderful bonuses. 
The game really wants you to specialize in some way or another and then have to rely on trade, or not to be allowed to become godly powerful. Which on one hand I understand from a balanced perspective, on the other hand, just let me have my fun, dude. I've earned this. What is this other thing we can build down here? A crypt. Interesting. I can place this over a graveyard and get significantly higher capacity on my uh, my graves. That's fun. Not that I'm really struggling for capacity, um, even though people are, you know, obviously dying. I guess we just rip their body out and replace it at some point. So it's not really an issue. Not yet. But someday that could be good. Still waiting for the library to be built. It's just gonna take forever, isn't it? It's gonna take forever. <clears throat> I remember this from the last time I played the game. Um, you need a lot of bricks at some point, and one brickyard simply does not cut it most of the time. That said, I simply don't feel like investing in more of that, so we're just gonna live with it. One thing I do wanna do, though, is go ahead and start working on some of that food preservation. Might as well get the Preservist building, start pickling things, making jam, you know, all the good stuff. Oh, finally, the library is starting to go up. <sighs> yeah, even with a second brickyard set up. I said I wasn't going to do it, but then I ended up doing it, and it's still taking forever to get bricks. So annoying. Anyway, library's up and running, which means this thing is now going to start consuming my books. Yep, books will wear out over time, but this should give me a lot more desirability in a lot of places. How are these houses doing? Oh, they're above the tier 4 level. So, uh, any second now, if I can just get some more bricks, shocker, um, they will decide they want to upgrade into a manor. So we have our first manor over here, a high-end home, providing shelter, and so on. Looks like it actually can have eight people living inside of a house. The funny thing is, I find that the richer a house is, the less people are intended to live in it. It's a little bit of a oxymoron, I suppose. It's not what you would expect, very counterintuitive, but there you go. So anyway, this thing is able to consume all of our highest end stuff, including books, by the way, and just make me a whole lot of money. And yep, I was right, here comes a whole bunch of manor houses. I wish I could actually see exactly how much money this produces for me right here, you know? Just actually tell me what the benefit is. Because I can see taxes from like large houses, manors. Two. Two? That's it? That's all I get is two gold for having a manor? It just doesn't feel like a lot, to be honest. It really doesn't feel like very much of a reward for all the effort. Well, while they're getting their upgrades, something I should consider doing is building up what I'm going to need for horses, I think. Because if we truly want to unlock the power of the military, we need to get ourselves a stables, right? And that should be under, I think it's defense. Cavalry stable, found in resource production. Uh... I need to build a stable under resources, huh? Okay, where is that? That is... right here. Okay. So this is where we can place down horses. Fair enough. Um, I might as well have a nice little stable just outside the city, I guess. Whoa, an invading army demands payment. Huh. Right. How strong is this invading army and why is this different from, um... Why would this be different from what we had before? Out of curiosity. Like, how much stronger is this? Is this really strong? Should I be scared? Maybe. Can I afford 2,000 gold? Absolutely. Will I actually pay this in order to keep these guys off my back under regular circumstances? Yeah. But I am curious how strong they are. Hmm. I don't know. Call me crazy, but when I hear an invading army is on the way, I'm thinking they might have siege equipment. And I still don't have the proper military to fight them off. I'm just going to pay them. All right, I know, I know, I know. It's the right decision, though. What is 2,000 gold to me? Not a lot. That's like 100 candles or less, right? Or whatever it is. Maybe it's more than that. But the point is, it's not that big of a deal. And uh, it is going to be way more expensive for me to try and militarize my society, getting my troops up and also building more towers, than to just say, no, nah, go away. I'm rich. I'll pay you. Bye. Y'all may think that's cowardice, but really it's just showing that I've elevated myself to a place of supreme capitalistic power, okay? When you have enough money, the things that normally would kill people are not really problems for me. This is really just me showing off how wealthy I am. I don't know, guys. Do you think they bought it? I I'm definitely scared, but I don't want them to know. By the way, I forgot to point out that we have our preservist up and a running. So it's making some pickled vegetables and stuff now. We can kind of decide what's a priority. This is a way of using up my glassware plus even more firewood. I'm actually starting to burn through my firewood at an alarming rate. 
This is the first time since, like, the beginning of the game that I'm actually running low on things like firewood. We should probably just get ourselves one more splitter to be safe. Also, what the frick are the deer doing on this side of the wall? Someone kill them! Oh, but why do you want to kill Bambi? Because deer are pests, okay? I don't care what people say. Oh, they're these beautiful, elegant creatures. My mom certainly seems to think so. I see them for what they are. Giant suburb rats, all right? They get into your yards, they eat all your flowers and all your other plants, and then they get in the way of your car and they can get you killed, all right? Friggin' heck, no, just hunt the deer. Look how many manners I've got now. Oh, it's almost as if I'm the Manor Lord. That's a, that's a slight reference to another series that uh, is coming up. If it hasn't started already, I'm not sure about the exact timing of it. Very fun game. Really recommend you guys check it out on the channel. Again, as I said in a previous video, it's an interesting contrast between that game and Farthest Frontier. I think they both have their own merit in different ways. Hey, somebody who sells horses. All right, I'm going to go ahead and buy like two or three of these things. Well, let's say three. I could buy four, but they're kind of expensive. Then again, if I special order them, they're extra expensive. So fine, I'll just go ahead and buy four. But since we now have a stable, I will send them over <laughs> Mion. We have two people working here already. Perfect. Take care of my beautiful horses. And there they go. All right. So now that I have those, if I wanted to come to defenses and get a cavalry stable, this is an option. And what a beautiful option it do be. Um, I guess I'll place it over here. Oh, hello, little baby. Okay, the heir has come to visit, crawling into my office. This is a small problem, though, because um, the little boy has discovered that there is a big glowing power light on my computer tower. And every time he comes in here, he makes a beeline because he wants to press the button. So um, if the video ends unexpectedly, it's because he shut my computer off. Not that I couldn't fix that, obviously. It's not a big deal, like, I, yeah. But still, it'd be hilarious if he did, right? Year 50, by the way. 50 years we've been building up in Yollyton. And I'd say in a 50 year time span, this is looking pretty good. Oh, the stables are built, by the way. Okay. So just like with everything else, we can set up a retinue here of horsemen. I wish it told you exactly what equipment they need here as well. No, it does say that, okay. Weapons and halberks. Right, so just basic swords and basic armor. The stuff that I'm already able to produce. If only I had a lot more iron production, that would be feasible. It's basically the exact same types of equipment as the light infantry, minus the shields. And obviously using horses, which is probably technically more expensive to have anyway. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, fast cavalry that's really good at taking down enemy archers and catapults. That could be a thing. Catapults, huh? Catapults are a thing? Well then, if catapults are a thing, I'm glad that I paid off that army. Because I cannot deal with catapults. There's this bear, by the way, who's just hanging outside of the gate. Everyone who comes walking through is like, Get him! And they're like, ah, run behind the gate. And he's like, oh, never mind. I guess I waddle away. Like that. There, right there. Exactly that. Sometimes he gets a swipe off. He hasn't killed anyone yet, though. But there we go. Now I've got somebody in a tower. We can just shoot that bear dead. He's like, oh, man, what is going on? Oh, that kind of hurts. And oh, blah. There we go. Dead bear. <laughs> it's a little stupid. I admit it. It's a little stupid. I'm really still struggling with plank production. Uh, I can't grind up flour fast enough still, which is a small problem. Even though that means I can't turn it into enough bread either. Um, and iron. Yeah. Planks. Iron and flour. Those are the things that I simply cannot produce enough of anymore. So do we want to go ahead and start um, hiring up some soldiers? Um, at five monthly costs for each of these, this seems like something I can now afford. So I'm going to go ahead and hire up, let's say, six light infantry, maybe eight light infantry, plus four archers. And that's going to be my standard retinue in both of these locations. And then we're going to go ahead and try to clear out some bandits. Do I want to also just hire up some horsemen? I could. Much higher monthly cost. But it would be nice to have at least a few, right? Eh. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Before we do that, let's just see how many weapons and stuff I have left over once this is all said and done. I should have enough for all of this. I believe that I do. And that's going to be a fully equipped set of uh, units. My archers can wear halberks as well? I did not know that. Okay, we may not have enough armor now, but eh, oh well. Eh, looks like I've actually got enough to go around for everybody. Okay. However, I have now consumed almost all of my income. 
I'd love to get that 30% upkeep cost reduction, but uh, I don't know. I feel like doing more damage is just consistently more important. So we want to go deal with things like wolves and bandits, right? Tell you what, let's start with something easy like wolves. Um, I want to flag a combat area? No, I want to go and select all infantry units and tell them that we are going over this direction. I see a wolf den over here. The reason I want to start with the wolves is I understand that it's a little bit difficult to control these units sometimes, as we have seen with the archers. So there might be some better ways to deal with this. And here come all the soldiers. Honestly, they're looking pretty good. Like, this looks like a very, very decent little retinue for me, right? It's respectable. And why are they all starting to go back home? No, get back over here. Good God, you guys are all so incompetent. All right, so archers, you are on, I guess, a defensive stance. And then infantry will also be on a defensive stance for the moment. And then we start marching up over here and I want to tell them to go like this way and then we'll try getting the archers right behind them and see if this actually works the way that I want it to. I want enemies to come to me and I don't want my archers to go running forward and being stupid. So there's, there's wolves right there and they are not shooting at them. Look at this, do you see how stupid this is? All right, be offensive. Everyone go and offend them. Nope, they're still doing absolutely freaking nothing. This guy's gonna die because you're all stupid. Kill the freaking wolf. Oh my god. I've got absolutely no sympathy for this. None at all. I- Ugh. You can't revolutionize your military systems in this game and then have your people be so brain dead that it's an absolute pain in the patut to use them. That's just not gonna work, guys. Come on, devs. Make this just a little bit more intuitive, please. Like, does anyone want to go through here and manually click on everything that they have to kill? I don't think so. I know I don't want to. Anyway, that takes care of a wolf den. Hooray! That's one dire threat removed. Dire? Dire wolves? No, thankfully no. Ah! Raiders are approaching! I was about to go and kill your camp! You live another day. Everyone retreat, please. They may have a freaking catapult. Or they may have a freaking battering ram, and I need to deal with these things. Let's remember, they're smart enough that they will retreat and attack me from places where I don't have any archers ready to shoot them. Which unfortunately means I really do want to have basically every tower online so that they have no place where they can go. Which is just a little irritating, but okay. Oh my god, that is a lot of bandits. 120 raiders! Oh, for God's sake, this is so fair. Very fair, very fair what's happening right now. Mm, so much fairness. Well, I think these guys are all gonna get dealt with pretty easily. Um, I say that. Wait. No one's actually in their towers. We can't even respond fast enough. We literally can't respond fast enough. <laughs> Alright, they're trying to run over to this corner. I think this is gonna be fine. We got two towers that can shoot at them, they'll be alright. Down over this direction. Yeah, they're trying to hit me right here, which is objectively where I am the weakest. Look at this, that's the least overlap. Fortunately, I still have at least a couple of towers over here, so we should be able to beat them down too. And the fact that they have absolutely no battering rams means they're not gonna knock down these walls, and we all know it. There we go, there we go. Just rain death upon them. Rain death upon them all! Once again, my soldiers are just standing here, doing nothing. Oh, what's that guy doing? Oh, finally someone's proactive. Gosh, they're just, they're just so dumb. I'm sorry, but they are. They're just so dumb. And now the raiders are running away. They did nothing. They smacked themselves against a wall like, come on, let me in, let me in. And then they all, they all died. Hooray, victory is mine. All right, where were we? Oh, right. I was about to mount up for an attack against the bandits and destroy their camps. They've been leaving me alone thus far, but I'm not going to leave them alone. What did I lose, by the way? Not a thing. Four fences were knocked down. No one died, and I killed 84. Yeah, I think we've reached the point where defensiveness is no longer my problem. We can absolutely handle anything except for siege equipment. And that's kind of, you know, why siege equipment exists, to screw with you. All right, so we're gonna come over here with our units, and we're gonna try to lay effectively an ambush. I do not want to run into this tower. I want to draw their attention to me, which is exactly what is happening right now. And then I'm gonna tell my people to go kill them. Of course, they have archers. They've got a lot of archers. Oh, good. Okay, so now I have to run in here and just go kill them all that way. 
You've got a lot of towers, guys. How did you get all these towers? Where'd they come from? How'd you do this? I don't know. Kill them all, please. Okay, raid campment defeated. We get equipment, including armor and gold and stuff. Yay! That actually was actually kind of worth it. It paid for itself, I think. And we only lost, like, what? One man? That's not bad. That's not bad. Go home and heal for a little bit. And then um, I will get a replacement, and then we will kill the other camp. Okay, the Provis Company and the Gimli Company are assembled. Let's do the exact same thing we did before. We are going to try to lure some bandits away from their towers, which I don't think will be too hard to do. Hi, I'm over here! Ah, they're shooting at me! Run, run, run! Cowardly Sir Robin, he turned his tail and fled. Okay, there we go. Get them! Also, there's a bunch of wolves. Oh, goody. You know, I'm sure you're all great friends, aren't you? It would make a lot of sense. All right, that takes care of that. Run in there, destroy the camps. How are they respawning so freaking fast? That is a lot of bandits. How are you doing this? All right, we destroyed that thing, and another one of my archers got shot dead. Cool. Well, it's fine, it's fine. That's done. Let's go deal with the wolves. I don't even see any wolves around here. Oh, there's bandit. Hey! Hey! Where'd you come from? Get back over here. Oh, there's another camp. Freak me. All right, pull back. Ha <laughs> ha, unexpected turn of events. All right, you know what? Screw it. I think I got enough soldiers that we can just go do this. Let's just go kill these guys. They haven't got all their reinforcements together yet, which means we should be able to destroy their towers and things, right? Probably. Get in there, guys. Get them there. Wish I had some cavalry so that we could quickly go and kill all of their archers, but destroy the camp. That's the one that's spawning them, and that takes care of that. Thank you very much. Look, I may have lost a few more men, but that is their job, right? We don't pay them a lot for nothing, do we? And at least as far as I know, we just brought security into my new empire. Everyone should be safe. I wish that actually reduced the number of bandits that could raid you throughout the year. That would be nice. As far as I know, it has no impact, but I could be wrong on that point. Anyway, is there anything else that I really wanted to do at this point? We've kind of built up everything. I think I've got literally every building in the game except for some decorations, which don't really matter too much. We're pretty darn well defended at this point. Food is still struggling a little bit, but we have enough production that we can get throughout the year without too much of a problem. So we're good on that front. I've got my relics up and running. My military just cleared out all enemies. The only thing I can't deal with are literally roving armies that have siege equipment. And for that, I can just pay them off because I'm freaking rich. So yeah, at this point, I would say we've actually managed to quote unquote beat the game as much as I feel like we need to beat the game. Everything from here on out should basically be rinse and repeat. And while some people do find that particularly engaging, I personally do not. I think that it can be one of those things where it's just like, you know, we've seen this all before. Let me just spend the next eight hours just making 20 minutes of clips. You know, it's not the most engaging thing. I'd rather move on to other stuff like Manor Lords. You know, that'd be fun. But I had fun with Farthest Frontier. I actually think that this has come a fairly long way since the last time I played. Definitely more balanced in a lot of ways. More mechanics to kind of fix some of the issues I've got. I do think that the whole military system is not really much of an improvement from what we had before. I mean, I'm sure it's better, but it's got a ways to go. Did we automatically get our people back for these companies, by the way? Certainly seems that way. I didn't realize that was a thing. Anyway, um, yeah, as far as like the commands and stuff, I mean, you just saw the AI seems to be a little bit brain dead there. And that's a little frustrating. You want your guys to be a lot more impactful. But the fact that there is cavalry and stuff, I mean, that's kind of cool. It's just not something I really want to use. The bigger issue to me is just that it's too expensive. I mean, really, like, uh, you have to rely so very heavily on trade. Taxes, even with manors getting built and a lot of desirability, you just don't generate a lot of money yourself. You really don't. So it's simply not enough to justify a very large standing army. It's almost always better to do exactly what I've done. Create a fortified town with towers everywhere, pull them out only when you need to, and boom, you make a lot more money, you get a lot more prosperous, and you're not over committing into something that's not actually adding a lot of value, like stupid soldiers that get themselves killed. So still some ways to go, I think, in this game. But overall, I think it's still coming along very nicely. I think it's in a pretty good spot right now. A lot of you guys could definitely enjoy it. So if you want to give it a shot yourself, Hey, recommend it. Go for it. Give it a go. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe for my future content, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>